First, I want to say uh, it's a pleasure to, to be part of this year's DEF CON conference. The subject that uh, I will, the story that I will explain today, uh, as we can see on the title, it's called A Web Driver Story, One Stack to Rule the Mill. So, uh, who am I? I'm Stefan Blazewski. Uh, I work at Melon for around three years and I have overall experience of almost six years. Uh, initially, uh, at the beginning, I started uh, in the gaming industry and after that it was just a roller coaster with different types of project solutions and so on and so on. You can find me on these social media links or you can just drop me a message on my Gmail account. So, let me just configure this. I wanna say a few words about engineering because almost everyone here is an engineer. So engineering is crucial for our society because it enables the creation of new technologies, products, and infrastructures that improve our quality of life. It also drives economic growth. The increasing complexity of technology infrastructures today has a significant impact on quality assurance engineers. Quality assurance engineers are essential for ensuring the quality the quality and reliability of software products. Some key characteristics of successful quality assurance engineers are analytical thinking, so we are analytical problem solvers uh, who, who can break complex problems into smaller parts. Uh, we are detail-oriented with ability to catch even the smallest bugs. We are trained to think about problems in terms of systems and develop of systems and uh, rather than indiv individual components. We are, engineering is often a team effort, so we need to collaborate with the rest of the team. And finally, we put ourselves in the shoes of the end user and test the software from their perspective. Everything that I said until now was generated but by Chat GPT. <laughs> so thank you, Chat GPT. <laughs> so from now on I will do a freestyle. <laughs> so the the idea. Uh, Digital infrastructures today are very complex. There are supersets from multiple, from, there are supersets from, from multiple types of technologies, uh, from services and so on and so on. It's just getting more complex and complex. Uh, they need to be reliable, highly available, scalable, and fault tolerant. So even if we have uh, some kind of natural catastrophe, our core components from our infrastructure should be up and available. They're performance focused. Uh, what this means is everything needs to be fast. <laughs> uh, and they should be stable while there is uh, stress and load in our infrastructure. And finally, they need to be uh, cross-platform. What this means is that they need to be able to, to run on multiple types of software and hardware architectures. Even our refrigerators nowadays needs a digital infrastructure. So how this affects uh, quality assurance engineer uh, is greater and greater testing challenge for quality assurance engineers because our test plan is just getting bigger and bigger we need to we need to check uh, more and more components of our infrastructure, so it's getting complicated. 
Uh, this also uh, triggers a greater need for automation. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are a huge amount of, of software tools, web browsers that you can, if you do the checks manually, it will be time consuming. So the idea is to, to unify everything in, in one hood. So, and uh, also quality assurance engineers, they need to have diverse skill sets because the technology stack is just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, yeah, it's complicated. So the idea was to try and unify multiple types of, of tests under one project. Uh, why? Because it will be easier to maintain. We can apply the same principles and we can generate uh, a report that will include the results from those multiple types of tests. So the technology stack uh, that I've used for the creation of this proof of concept, uh, as a foundational block, we are using Node.js. Everybody knows what Node.js is. It's a runtime environment for JavaScript uh, uh, runtime environment that enables us to execute JavaScript code outside of the browser. For programming language, we are using TypeScript. I think everybody knows what TypeScript is. It's just a compiler. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> TypeScript enables us uh, static typing. It enables us to apply object-oriented principles. Uh, it has improved tooling and debugging, and at the end of the day, it's compatible with and can coexist with existing JavaScript code. Uh, our main tool for, for this tech stack is WebDriver.io. WebDriver.io is a Node.js library that enables us the automation. Uh, it's very easy to use. It has a built-in CLI. You can create a, a simple empty project within a minute. It's cross-platform compatible. What this means is that we can run our tests on different types of, of web browsers. Uh, it's scalable, fast, and reliable. It has a great community with a huge amount of, of third-party services. So under the hood, uh, it has a support for multiple uh, protocols. Uh, the, um, most of the time, we, we are using a web driver protocol, but uh, it has also support for DevTools protocol, so you can run your tests using Puppeteer. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of features in, in this technology. I won't explain them. No, but you can take a look at the documentation if you're curious. So, uh, it has a, I will say a few words, because, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the core in the, in the test stack. Uh, yeah, it has a built-in uh, logger. Uh, uh, as I said previously, you can execute the test on multiple types of browsers. There are uh, before and after hooks. So it's very configurable. Uh, for mobile execution, we are using APM. APM is a technology that was initially was created in 2011 in C Sharp, but after that it was rewritten in Node.js. Basically, uh, at the beginning, it was using a modified protocol that was called mobile JSON bar protocol, but after that, the latest version is using a web driver protocol. So basically, it enables us to run our tests on native mobile web and hybrid applications on different mobile operating systems. For API testing, uh, we are using a pretty lightweight library that is called SuperTest. It's built on top of a super agent. Uh, basically, it enables us to test HTTPS servers and RESTful APIs. It has huge amount of 
uh, of features, but uh, one of them is that can handle cookies, query parameters, headers, and also it has a built-in assertion, uh, so you can structure your checks uh, better. And for DB tests, because we wanted to include some basic DB tests, we, the idea was to, to try and uh, uh, execute some tests on different types of databases because nowadays our infrastructure is, is as I said previously, is just getting bigger and bigger and uh, yeah, we wanted to see if we can do DB testing or data validation checks on different types of databases. Uh, I'm using uh, Node MySQL 2 and Node Postgres. Uh, a few features for them. Uh, from quality point of view, our goal was to be able just to execute a query. So if you can execute a query, the possibilities are endless. So it, uh, they have pooling support, are synchronous queries execution, and they're very easy to integrate within our infrastructure. So I will tell you uh, two stories that happened to me while I was preparing this proof of concept. So everybody is afraid of the issues. <laughs> uh, I was uh, in the middle of my development while I was creating this proof of concept. I was using a new Mac machine with M1 Max processor. And uh, in the middle of my development, for some reason, my debugger started to throttle. And uh, after a few executions uh, in the debugger, uh, there was a memory, memory leak and my, my, my laptop just crashed. So uh, I was troubleshooting for around eight hours. At, at the end of the day, <laughs> I found out that I just increased my node version by mistake to a not stable one. <laughs> so, yeah, we always make mistakes. It's part of our nature. After that, I was trying to log into LinkedIn and uh, I was using a fresh instance of Firefox browser. And nowadays, every application, uh, almost every application, it has a multi factor authentication process where you need to enter your email, your credentials, and after that, you will receive a digit on your email and you need to enter it on the front end side for but for some reason for for some reason I was not able to do that on LinkedIn production. <laughs> but yeah, I found a workaround. I just used a, a session on my Chrome browser where I have saved cookies and I just log into I just log into to LinkedIn. So there is always a solution. Uh, What's my point here? Uh, issues are inevitable. We will always make them. It's part of our nature. But the idea is to try it in our situation, is to try and find them as soon as we can in our development life cycle. Why? Because our return of investment will be higher. So I prepared a few I have a few uh, two code snippets and a few videos from the execution of the tests. Uh, the demo includes user interface tests, uh, integration tests like API and DB. It has a basic performance checks. And finally, there is a, uh, a video where we create, uh, where we execute a test that will fail and it will generate a report. On the left side, we can see an example of uh, the web end-to-end -end test. We are following a page object model. So we're just basically going uh, there. Um, for testing purposes, I'm using, uh, for the end-to-end -end test, I'm using the Swagger page from the API that I'm using on the right side in that code snippet. So. On the right side, uh, we have an example for API tests. Uh, I'm using uh, the, the API is called catfax, so it just it basically returns. There are two controllers, facts and breeds, and it returns data for cats. So uh, we can see that uh, 
we can chain multiple expects, we can do also basic performance checks using uh, performance hooks from Node.js, and uh, yeah, the case is that uh, we can use query parameter and we can uh, validate that uh, the result will be according to the limit that we use in the, in the query parameter. And at the end, we are just checking that uh, the response time is according to our configuration. So, I have a few video examples of the test executions. Uh, previously, there was a typo. I'm not sure did anybody notice that. I just want to, to check if you have attention to details. <laughs> so, uh, this is an example of uh, web test execution. So, the whole idea is to present that we can uh, run our tests in parallel on multiple types of browsers, Safari, Chrome, and Firefox in this situation. So, and when the tests are done, they're just doing basic checks on, on the Swagger page. So, when the tests are done, uh, there is a reporter on the terminal level that is called spec, and it's just returning us the results uh, from the tests. After that, uh, I have an example of uh, mobile native tests. Uh, the idea was to to see the possibility that we can execute our tests on multiple types of, of uh, devices. In this situation, we are using uh, three uh, simulators with different operating systems and different device types. And on the far right, we can see uh, an Android, which is a real device. So, as we saw previously, for the web, it's running in parallel. And uh, yeah, it's generating us uh, a report. Um, for the de for, for demonstration purposes, we, we were using a native application, but uh, there is a possibility to create test cases for for mobile web or for hybrid application. In this video. Uh, uh, this is an example of uh, API test. So basically, we are just checking the endpoints uh, for that CatFact API. So we have one failing test. Uh, it's returning uh, two. Uh, it's returning status code OK. But we are expecting uh, status code uh, bad request because the the check is that uh, we can. Uh, the check is that we can send an invalid parameter and we are expecting a bad request uh, response. And we can see there is an issue on the API level. On the Swagger page, there is a validation, but if you try to use, for example, uh, a script or a Postman as a tool, it will return uh, 200, which is not expected. And uh, for data validation checks, basically, I create locally two different types of DBs. Uh, one is MySQL, the other one is Postgres. They have two tables within them, and the idea was to just to demonstrate that it's possible to, to support multiple types of databases. The tests are just doing uh, simple validation checks. And yeah generating a report. And finally, uh, if our tests are failing, which is the point of the test, uh, there is a possibility to generate a detailed report using uh, a reporter that is called Alur. So I configure the test to fail and uh, to, so we can take a look at the report. So the test will fail. We will generate a report where we will have uh, an, an, an info on which type of browser the test fell, what, what went wrong, uh, what was expected, what was the last step of the test that failed. And uh, yeah, we can see we can see the report, we can see the, 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 the test case. So the failing tests are on Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. 
we can see what was expected that in the end of the stack trace uh, we get a screenshot from our last step within the test. So basically this was the, the idea to try to unify multiple types of tests under one hood and yeah, uh, it looks okay from my side. <laughs> from our side as well. Thank you for this presentation. It's time for questions. Do I see any hands up? Yes, we have a person over here in the middle. My chair. Otherwise, um, if you want, you can try to speak louder. I don't know, wild idea. Yeah. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's a uh, great presentation, by the way. Thanks. Uh, my question is about the web driver, I.O., so uh, because you use it, right? Yeah. What are the best practices for uh, writing the web driver test, and uh, how can these practices ensure efficient and effective testing? At what? You can use, you can follow the page object model, so you won't need to maintain. If you have a, a big uh, test plan, you can follow the page object model, where if you need to do a change, it won't be on the test level, it will be on the page object model level. So it will be a lot easier to, to maintain those tests. I think everybody is using that model for, for mapping the the elements of the, of the pages. Thank you for your question. Are there any more questions? Yeah, we have a question in the back over there, please, and then another one, so the microphone won't travel that far. Uh, yeah, uh, it supports the already existing selectors from Selenium, because under the hood it's using Selenium, uh, but uh, you can create also your custom selectors, and uh, yeah, uh, there are a few ways to find an element, uh, using XPAT, using class or ID or so on, so the same selectors that we use in Selenium we can use here, but there are also some dedicated selectors that are uh, under the best, best practice uh, uh, hood. So, yeah, uh, you can go to the documentation of WebDriver IR and you can see what are the possibilities. Splendid. And there was another question in the back just behind you. Um, yeah, that's it. Test. Considering that you mentioned ChatGPT in the beginning, uh, do you think that in the near future, instead of writing automation tests, you can train an AI to do the same checking depending on the code base? Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> I think ChatGPT is just a productivity tool that it's like a search engine on steroids. But uh, yeah, uh, as our uh, infrastructure is getting more complicated, complicated uh, yeah, we can definitely use ChatGPT to to help us and uh, to save uh, the uh, creation of the, the 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 time creation of our infrastructure. So yeah, I, I see ChatGPT only as a as a productivity tool, to be honest, as it is now. But yeah, let's see in a few years. What will be the result? I believe there will be a bit on this question covered as we are progressing to the rest of the presentations as well. But we do have time for one more question over here. Yellow sits in the corner, please. Blaje, you can ask me in the office. <laughs> oh, this sounds personal. <laughs> no, this is not personal. This is more of a way of thinking because uh, what you presented is obviously that QA engineers are more into development. 
And my question is, in terms of a team organization, how well is to be organized that some of this work is actually passed also to the developers to contribute to the same goal and not to rely only on maybe, I don't know, lack of resources or whatsoever, and then end up in not doing all the necessary automation because, as you explained, we are developing all of the tests. So if somebody can create the proper user stories, give the guidance, and then make a verification, then also maybe some other team members can contribute in towards creating a reliable solution for everybody. So what is your thought of this process? Yeah. Uh, it was a long question, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I suggest just to... Because as I said in the in the beginning, uh, engineering is a collaborative thing. Uh, you need to be part of some team to to create the solution as expected. So, yeah, we need to collab collaborate with each other because uh, in that way we can achieve our, our goals. Long story short. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stefan.